Hey guys, it's Penelope in London. It's a full moon, full moon in Cancer. So I'm going to show you this chart and I'm going to show you mine as well. I was very pleased to have um, the aspects on this moon for me, very beautiful. So we do want to look to our own chart to understand what the full moon, if I said the new moon, full moon means for us and Mercury's retrograde as well. So I'm having to catch myself on recalling what I've said. So if I get my pointer, and we'll have a quick look here. So this is the full moon, and you can see that the sun is 2750 of the sign of Capricorn, and the moon is opposite. So we always have the, the sun opposition to the moon. And what that fundamentally, or what it means, is that with the sun opposite, we have a full moon, which occurs approximately once a month. And this is a powerful time to plant seeds of intention that you would like to see unfold over the remaining two weeks of the cycle. And success is more likely when you begin new projects and initiate ideas during a new moon phase. So this is a full moon. And then we know that we go into a new moon. Um, you know that's sort of the cycle and the time between that so we've got two weeks and um, this is initiating and then we continue um with stuff as well then the sun conjunct pluto this is a big one so you can see here that the sun is conjunct pluto and what we have is um it's very potent this and it you know clearly it's still in you can see still in all we got pluto at 26 there in Capricorn and with the sun conjunct Pluto there's a light shining so it's about renewal because Pluto is about birth death transformation death sounds awful but death leads to renewal if we look at the leaves falling off the trees we know that to be the truth and the petals falling off the beautiful flowers and the endings of things you know moving home the endings of jobs the a lot of stuff going on right now with, um, you know, I've got friends who work in healthcare in the UK and some of them will, will leave their positions because they do not want um, to be injected as an example. And I'm seeing a lot of people in America and then there's so many things changing. So there is a light shining on things with people making really different choices right now. Um, this is a potent day that can be filled with power struggles as well. And it's about personal empowerment and depending on how we choose to channel our energy. So we have free will and the more conscious we become and we look at our fight, flight, freeze form from childhood, the childhood stuff, our triggers and responses. And when we move away from um, situations that we consider to that inflame us, that feel toxic for us, that, that inflame our you know, inflame us in a, in a, you know, inflammation, if we think about it. I mean, this is the whole thing with the, uh, the virus thing it's all to do with in being inflamed and we know when we get when we get triggered you know we can feel a sense of getting heated and feeling you know not ourselves and we get impulsive so it's you know very interesting how you know everything is connected in as we know um everything is connected um it doesn't mean that everything like the bypassing aspect of spirituality where we say you know one love and what everything you know is connected in a way that's um healthy you know it's just that there is there are connections and that we put the dots together and then we have to make a conscious choice and capricorn in part is to do with judgments um you know and being authority and we have to be our own authority and sometimes make choices and leave things behind or stand up and speak the truth we have to do things you know we're on a soul journey we've also got the moon is opposition pluto as well so when the sun is and with the moon this is where we have transformation that you know pluto and the moon when that's opposite there's also a possibility of conflict so we have conflict and then we have wanting to be empowered and then this can be cause compulsions as well and there can be an exceptional level of deep feelings can lead to, to us, you know, making decisions that maybe, you know, we can be sensitive. There's a sensitive awareness about the other's needs and our needs because the moon is that. And the moon in Cancer is, um, I'm going to read to you, that moon actually, um, it's uh, January the 17th, 2022, and it's um, full moon at 2348 UK time, five hours behind if you're in New York 
and ahead if you're in Australia, but eight hours behind also if you're in um, 5.48 p.m. if you're in California, as an example, and that would be at 2750 degrees. So with this Cancer moon, it's, a feeling, it's about our feelings of safety um, and being related to our home and family and our activities to do with, you know, around the home that you can be gardening and cooking. It's the, the nurturing as well. We also have that we can be prone to emotional fluctuations with this and we need to learn or not learn, but we need to integrate um, our feelings so that it's not about forgetting things that have not hurt us, but it's coming to an integration so we're not so much in pain, so we can avoid depression. The more we integrate in life, actually, the more that we integrate that our painful events, again, spirituality would say, get rid of, let it go, um, but you know, or forgive. And those things are not always appropriate for certain things. I mean, if we look at the Epstein case with, um, you know, what's gone on there with um, the trafficking, as an example, you know, we don't, to me, we don't bring forgiveness into such things. We have to call out certain things and then we have to integrate what that means. And then we, I'm, I'm using that as an example, then we do things in society that will make the world a better place. So again, um, you know, forgiveness, use it to your, you know, to your, not to your advantage, that would be the wrong word. I would really change it for integration. That's what I would do for people that have been through a lot of pain in their lives. Also, um, that we can have very emotional, rich time at this time with the moon there as well. It's very deep. It's at the lowest part of the, how, the chart, you see there. And the MC is the highest, so that that's up here. And the lowest part of the chart is the fourth house. The tenth house is the highest. It's the noon point. So also, let's have a look at the definition. We've got Mercury retrograde. There's so much going on. But I did a video yesterday which refers to, you know, other stuff on there, like this, the, the Uranus connection with the Mercury retrograde and then the Saturn. So do check out the video I made yesterday. I'm going to stick with the moon. And then we've got the, the moon, lowest part of the chart. And um, you want to look what house that's in for you. For me, that's in, um, that's actually in my eighth house for me. Um, I'll set, just, I think it's, I'll double check. We'll have a look in a moment, but the exact point, because I have a crossover. Um, in my chart so we can look at the moon and we've got ego we've got the womb it's childhood environment it's to do with children the home roots it's our ancestors the clan family mother protection security it's our inner world it's our nurturing so we've also got to learn to nurture ourselves it's protection where we protect ourselves and we protect others it can also be neglect you know helplessness and our needs emotions it's our self-image it's where we can be touchy and subjective because our you know we we have a we have a memory and then we have a feeling and then we act on those things and then we feel as well it's also um gender roles um i won't go too deep into that but you know the but in fact keep it simple the masculine and the feminine and the anima and the animus as jung would say i've been learning a lot about that lately but doing the real work in integrating what that means because it's very difficult work to get one's head around maybe not for everybody but it has been a bit of work for me to understand my own animus which is the masculine inside of me um, and that which I then project and um, when we have an early you know experience we'll either project you know an idealized um, version of a male onto the, a male or we will, you know, if we've had a very painful event um, via our birth fathers or the males that have been in our lives, you know, it's unconscious in us as well. You know, we have early imprints. It's very beautiful work to do and to heal and integrate. So the Capricorn sun you see here, up here, and this is to do Capricorn words are to do with social position, authority, our own inner authority as well, judgments. And there is healthy judgment. You know, this is another thing. I'm knocking spirituality today, am I not? Um, it can be very beautiful, but as long as we don't bypass, and this is really important in, in all things, religion or even astrology, you know, we don't want to bypass people's pain by saying, oh, you, it's in your chart and it's your karma. You know, I know myself, I went through 
a lot of abuse as a kid and some people would say from my chart well it's your karma and that can be very unsettling for people that have been through abuse you know if somebody was trafficked for instance I'm not saying I was but if somebody was you would not say to them oh that's your karma if somebody believes that if you're if we're working with each other and that's somebody's belief then so be it but if it's not then we need to be gentle and not put people into the fight flight freeze mode and activate them unnecessarily so that would mean that we would have to think about our communication i'm doing a course at the end of january um nonviolent communication a 13 hour base course which i can use in my female groups on meetup which i do for free i do three meetings free um a week so you can check me out the link will be below this video on youtube so Capricorn sum and maturity it's old age it's repression it can be oppression as well we've seen a lot of that going on it's government yeah it's up there 10th house it's to do with authority we can have grief we can have punishment discipline we're seeing that go on around the world for sure um totalitarian totalitarian behaviors fear rigid paralysis um conformity it can also be isolation. It says, you know, the key word would be suicide. I'm not, one of the words here, which is very heavy, you know, but there's been a lot of that through the last two years that's not been noted to us all. There's been, it's very difficult times. What will come to pass in history of this time will be very fascinating because more, more reality will show after time. As we know, truth always tends to fall into place after events and numbers and statistics and all of the rest of it. With the Capricorn keyword, we have um, man-made law, it's ancestral, we have tradition, we have guilt, we can have self-defeat and futility. There's boundaries. Now, some boundaries are good, yeah? So we have to learn those boundaries. We have structure and form because of the connection with Saturn, with it in Capricorn. And then we have nationalism, patriotism, politics, responsibility, depression, because of the Saturn connection. A fall from grace, we're probably going to see a hell of a lot of that in the next... Um, um 11 11 and a half months and we have burdens and we have um conditioning by family and society now we know a lot of us are going individuated at this point which is also the work of Jung. um let's see right let's give you this um i wrote an article i'm gonna change screen so we know this is going on and we know that mercury is retrograde for the next three weeks um to the 29th um, Venus is retrograde, then it will go direct, and then it will meet up with Pluto again. It got to Pluto, and then it went retrograde. So it was at 25, 26, then it went retrograde. There's a lot going on. See the video from yesterday, if you wish, that I uploaded to YouTube. So now I'm going to share screen a new screen. I'm going to show you my chart. Actually, before I do that, Let's see if I can share with you something that I wanted to share. Give me one minute here. Go there and we're going to go new share. Okay, I've got to get rid of my pointer. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde is playing with me. So there you go. All right, so this um, I'm going to read you. I've made an, I've actually joined medium.com. I've joined two writing sites, which I'm loving and enjoying. And one of them is medium.com. You just put in my name and I'm writing articles on astrology and you can um, subscribe to me there. Um, as I think I'll be moving away from Facebook in the coming months and, you know, ahead. And I'm finding new sites in order to keep, keep myself active and integrated with people. And then the other one is Subtrack, Subtrack, Subtrack. And you can find me over there as well. Now, what I'm going to do, I could put the links in the video below to these as well, actually. That would be good. On this, I've done a lovely, if I click on it, if you go to this page, what I've done is that I've made a little, you know, bit of talk on the moon. That I'm talking about now and then I've put a beautiful um ten, nine minute meditation there that I made a few years ago this is really lovely you would be really surprised I'm surprised it was that good and um, I did it myself and um I haven't been able to match it, it was, I've only done a couple but that was really good and it's beautiful it'll really empower you and then that's a beautiful picture of the moon but not this moon another moon um taken by a friend of mine now go back to sharing this 
here and share. So I want to make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, so this is my chart right now. Um, a few minutes ago. In fact, it would be at 2349 when the moon was absolutely full. I just passed it now, but I'm not loading to YouTube and you wouldn't know unless I told you. So the full moon today, 17th, we know 2022, sign of cancer at 27 degrees, the sun will oppose, and it's also conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. A definition, which I've just gone through, but a recap. And the fourth house is about home and family, which is cancer, the sign of cancer. It describes our roots, our heritage, our private life, other um, keywords, uh, the, the roots, family, relations, psychological foundations, biological inheritance, and the place of abode and karma. So we do come from an ancestral family that look back to the beginning of time. You know, there's before us, before us, before us. There's always something that's come before us. And then also as adults, we do get to build our own families through community we integrate. And we do have choices. Now, when we're down in the dumps, we can feel like, no, there are no choices. But we go through stages in life. That can be seen on the chart with the Saturn movement and what Pluto's up to. So if you wanted to look at your chart with me to understand any of that, I'm happy to. You can book, you can book an hour with me. So it's a time now that we learn how to strengthen our own inner authority and to do the inner work and to keep an open, loving heart. You know, we want to keep an open, loving heart. For many of us, it's a case of reparenting ourselves. And I do believe that we're placed here to follow our true calling. I truly believe that and move beyond shame and blame. But there is such a thing as healthy blame, um, which we have to realize again we don't want to bypass you know if we've been through trauma and we've lived in guilt and shame and blame inner blame all of our lives then we need to begin to turn that outwards and not to you know unhealthily but in a healthy way there's many healthy ways of dealing with our anger um also we need to acknowledge the past pain inflicted upon us and we need a witness for that yeah we need and the healthy blame and angering can help us move towards better caring for ourselves whilst we are grieving the past what we can also establish ourselves and then we can become lights for those in need um if you've had a difficult childhood there's a book by pete walker complex ptsd from surviving to thriving just remember that pete walker complex ptsd get that book if you've had difficulty even if you think you haven't if you get that book you're going to help other people there are a lot of people in trauma in this world so another way through past pain is to realize how far we've come, pat ourselves on the back, and also be grateful to those who have helped us along the way, because that can shift our mood as well. We don't realize how many people have held our hand and helped us. And also, we can also um, be learning to ask to have our needs met. That's something else. That's a nonviolent communication I'm learning to do, which I'll pass on information. And then when we learn also how to ask to have our needs met in a nonviolent way, then we can begin and also we'll begin to meet our, that is part of meeting our own needs. That's what I'm trying to say. We have to have faith and our process and our individual, we are individuals after all. So remember that 10 minute video on that page um, that I showed you, that's what I was reading from I wrote earlier. So look at this. Um, if you go to astro um, slash for, um, hyphen, um, dot com. Let's see this here. I've got that in the way. Um, we've got horoscopes at astroseat.com. Okay, so you can go there. But, and you can bring up your own chart. You need your time of birth to know what house the, um, is, the planets are falling into. So you can see my moon is there. But if I go back, um, let's say 10 minutes. In fact, it's going to be, yeah, 10 minutes. I'm going to go back 10 minutes. And another 10, and that's 29, and we want, let's say, 39. Okay, so the moon for me is in my, looks like it's in my ninth house. Let's see here, 2745. Right, so the moon is up there in my ninth house. So that's to do with, um, it's to do with spirituality. It's to do with, um, I'd say religion, but, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I do know God. Um, it's also to do with the justice and it's to do with truth and it's to do with higher education and also overseas travel. So that's quite beautiful. Then my, the sun is in my 
third house down here. Make sure I've got this right. 17th of January, 2022. Okay, so then you look at your chart and on the outside of the wheel of the transits and on the inside of the wheel are the, I just want to make sure this is right. I'm going, because the way I look at it is a bit different. That's my seventh house. And that's my, maybe it's on the tip of my, let me see here. This is better. There you go. It's in my eighth house. There you go. The moon is actually transit. So in my eighth house, it's to do with joint resources, actually, which is what I'm dealing with. So forgive my Mercury retrograde error there, but it's bound to happen when Mercury is retrograde. We get a bit lost. And also because it's also square to Uranus and it's on top of Saturn, that Mercury, it can be, a, it can stifle us a bit with on the Saturn and then on the, with that, um, it can be quite shocking as well. And also we can have long-term memories and, you know, traumas, I, memories come up. So this is quite fascinating. So actually it's in my eighth house. So the reason I say that when I, the chart I normally look at is astro.com and it's much clearer as to what's going on. This chart looks a bit, it's always a bit busy to my brain. But the thing I do like about using this site is this, that we've got, it gives you all of your aspects. So these are the orbs, you've got the planets in transit, the aspect, and then the birth planet. So if I just scroll down, what is the moon, that full moon doing to my chart? The full moon is trying to my Saturn, which is beautiful. The moon is sextile to my Mars. It's um, sextile to my Mercury and sextile to my sun. And then the sun is sextile to my Saturn, trying to my Mars, trying to Mercury. This is lovely. So the trines can be where we can be lazy because they're gifts. And then the sextiles, there's a bit of movement going on there. So if a sextile, we're really looking at um, movement. And in fact, as I get more educated, I can tell you what a sextile actually means because it is a major aspect. And a sextile, it's 60 degrees and it represents um, flow in alignment. The planetary energies flow together to open new possibilities and new connections. So then you would look at, you know, it's hitting different planets, you know, where's my Saturn, where's my Mars, and then where's my Mercury, and then you begin to see what houses they're in, because all of those planets for me, Mercury and Mars is in my sixth house, and my Sun is in my seventh, and Saturn is in my fourth. Um, so then if I scroll down further, the moon is up to other stuff, it's, um, it's got a trioctile, which is a hard angle to my power of fortune, and then it's got a trine to my south node and then are trying to my ascendant. So you can see all of these different things. But you know, overall, that's good for me. So I'm going to leave it there. And if you've got any comments, leave them below. And I hope you enjoy the full moon because it's a nurturing one. And we can be nurturing to ourselves when we start nurture with ourselves and we begin to nurture with others. And I know it's difficult right now. If you have any sort of need help if you're a woman if you're a lady then I do have my female group and you know you can join that it's free and it can see you through these coming months as these big changes continue to go on um, around us okay catch you later thanks for watching